Hi, Dr. Ross. My name is Eric, and I'm writing for you from Guatemala. I like your content because it is very handy. This is my question. Can excessive sexual activity, sex or masturbation, enlarge prostate in young men before 40s? So I always feel like my way of practicing medicine and my way of teaching is a nice blend between Western medicine, holistic practices, ancient Chinese tradition, ancient African traditions, and really anything that makes sense or, and or that I see results from. So if I see results from it clinically, if it makes sense, um, then I, I'm on board because a lot of times science can't explain everything. So this is one of my favorite books, The Tao of Sexology. I'm also a fan of Mangtak Chia, who is also one of the um, one of the famous Taoists that, that are sexologists. And I want to show you this picture here. This picture represents a phallus, right? This represents the penis. But I want you to look at the labeling here, right? You see the kidney, you see the liver, you see the lungs. And really, what ancient tri Chinese tradition teaches and what the Tao of Sexology teaches, and it makes sense to you if you've ever um, done reflexology or you've ever thought about how there are certain points on our feet that represent organ systems. Well, in ancient Chinese traditions, as you see this map, it's basically about these are the areas on the body that correspond to your penis. So basically, if you are the type of person who really enjoys masturbating and stroking the head of all of the time, then basically what you're doing is overstimulating the lungs. If you're the person who really gets down on um, doing the base, then the concept is that you're overstimulating your kidneys. So they use this um, map to kind of help illustrate to young people at the time and people who are getting married and gentlemen to illustrate some of the potential damage that you can do when you excessively stimulate certain areas of your body. So taking that one step further, and I think it, it makes sense to um, read you a, a sentence here, you can distinguish those who masturbate excessively from those who do not by the color of their skin, which is generally very pale often with a yellowish cast. Their eyes are frequently dull due to the depletion of energy, their thinking is slow, they lack ambition, and they are depressed. All this results from excessive masturbation. So the question is about how masturbation impacts the prostate. And there has been clinical trials and data that really seems to demonstrate that excessive ejaculation helps clean the prostate. But my experience with gentlemen who experience excessive masturbation is all of the above. It is that they tend to be depressed. It is that things don't seem to be running quick, running properly. It is that they have experienced fatigue. It is that the relationship is suffering. Because typically when you're overdoing it with masturbation, you are actually self-medicating in some particular way. You're basically you know, trying to, trying to chase this feeling, trying to feel good, trying to go to sleep at night, trying to do whatever you can um, to just feel good for the moment. And then what happens is afterwards, you just don't feel as good. And the same thing happens if you're do, having excessive sexual contact with people that aren't deserving of your contact or that you shouldn't have never really been with. You know, you out out every night and randomly having sex with certain people, then this typically tends to deplete you in a very similar way. And ancient traditions, whether it's um, the Chinese culture, whether it's certain different cultures uh, in prehistoric society, or even predating that, everybody seems to be very clear on the concept. It's, it's the all-star game tomorrow, right? What does the coach want the players to do? Stay away, stay away from people that they are sexually attracted to. Because why is that? Because traditionally speaking, too much masturbation, too much ejaculation is associated with lowered performance. So we can go through the scientific data and we can show what this says and what this says. But particularly speaking, when I have a young person in their 30s, 
who comes to me and has erectile dysfunction, one of the first things I look at and I ask is, how often are you masturbating? How, how often are you ejaculating? And if we can curtail that one thing, if I can get him to fast from it for a little bit of time and then go back to it in a healthy fashion, he's damn near cured. I don't really have to do much. So if you are young and you're struggling with erectile issues, you may be busting too much. Um, and as a result of it, it has depleted your ability to, to, to get hard, stay hard, and to do all, all of the great things in life that you were meant to do. So you want to think of it sometimes, especially if, if you're masturbating or especially if you're with someone new and you're still trying to figure out, do I even like this person? You want to be very strategic about who you ejaculate with because there's power in it, right? So for instance, male semen has dopamine in it. So if you're depositing your semen into someone else, now they've got a little shot of feel-good hormone. So now all of a sudden they acting strange, you know, like they, they, they got stalker-like tendencies, right? And it didn't have to happen because if you'd have paid attention long enough and realized that the person wasn't for you, then you wouldn't have wasted that type of energy on them. So what you want to do is you want to be very protective of your uh, ejaculate and you want to be very discerning. So if you happen to be in a sexual situation with someone, I know the videos and everything makes it seem like you just want to bust and just do whatever, you really want to be very strategic about it because you're leaving your DNA behind, you're leaving your kids behind, <laughs> you're leaving your dopamine behind, and some of that would have just been better spent on yourself than on another person, right? So there's a lot of power in exchanging bodily fluids, and at the end of the day, you just, a lot of people just don't deserve some of those fluids, right? So let's be a little bit more discerning about that.